My name is Erin Kroll, and I will be talking about Cefaxin with you today. IVSD. You know the symptoms when they start. Abdominal pain. Urgent diarrhea. Now there's prescription Zyfaxin. Zyfaxin is a new IBSD treatment that helps relieve your diarrhea and abdominal pain symptoms. And Zyfaxin works differently. It's a prescription antibiotic that acts mainly in the digestive tract. Do not use Zyfaxin if you have a history of sensitivity to rifaximin, rifamycin antibiotic agents, or any components of Zyfaxin. Tell your doctor right away if your diarrhea worsens while taking Zyfaxin, as this may be a sign of a serious or even fatal condition. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease or are taking other medication, because these may increase the amount of Zyfaxin in your body. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant, plan on becoming pregnant, or are nursing. The most common side effects are nausea and an increase in liver enzymes. If you think you have IBS with diarrhea, talk to your doctor about new Zyfaxin. The generic name of this medication is known as rifaximin. Zafaxin is manufactured by Salix Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. It is based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Questions and concerns can be sent to them to the address or email listed, as well as by calling or faxing them. The pharmacologic class of Zafaxin is an antibiotic. Zafaxin inhibits bacterial RNA synthesis by binding to bacterial DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Zafaxin has poor bioavailability meaning little of the drug is absorbed systemically when taken orally. It has a half-life of five to six hours and peaks in one hour. Most of the drug is excreted through your feces with very little excreted in the urine. Zafaxin is indicated in patients with hepatic encephalopathy, irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea, and traveler's diarrhea. It helps to reduce the risk of overt hepatic encephalopathy recurrence in adults and has been found to be as or more effective than other available treatments for hepatic encephalopathy. It is better tolerated and may work faster. It doesn't usually produce the symptoms that lactulose may cause. In patients with irritable bowel syndrome, it decreases the symptoms of diarrhea, flatulence, and bloating seen in these patients. And has been highly effective in treating patients with traveler's diarrhea not caused by E. coli. Do not use in patients with diarrhea complicated with fever or blood in the stool or diarrhea caused by other pathogens. Dosage for this drug is dependent on the reason we are giving it. In patients with hepatic encephalopathy, 550 milligrams is given twice a day. In patients with IBSD, 550 milligrams is given three times a day for two weeks. It may also be given two more cycles if symptoms do not subside. In patients with traveler's diarrhea, they are given 200 milligrams three times a day for three days. Children older than 12 years of age may use this drug for the symptoms of traveler's diarrhea and they will get an adult dose. There are no dosage adjustments for pregnant, breastfeeding, geriatric, patients with renal failure or hepatic impaired patients. 
Contraindications of its use would be for patients who have hypersensitivity to other rifamycin antibiotics. Warnings and precautions of Zyfaxin include hypersensitivity, which is a rash, flushing, exfoliative dermatitis, which is widespread erythema and scaling of the skin. These symptoms occur within 15 minutes of drug administration. An increased temperature, blood in the stool, and change in mental status can also be signs of hypersensitivity. Super infections may occur from prolonged use. This includes fungal and bacterial infections. C. difficile and pseudomembranous colitis, which is inflammation of the colon. This occurs when good bacteria is overtaken by bad bacteria in the colon. Also, Zyfaxin should not be taken if it is suspected that the patient's diarrhea is caused by Campylobacter jejuni, Shigella, and Salmonella, which are bacteria that cause food poisoning. Seek alternative therapy if symptoms persist after 24 to 48 hours of treatment. Propylene glycol in large amounts can be toxic. Patients should seek medical attention if they begin to have seizures and respiratory depression. Lactic acidosis is also a result from propylene glycol toxicity in which lactate builds up in the bloodstream and the pH of the blood becomes low, which can cause muscle aches, rapid breathing, nausea, and stomach pains. Interactions include diminished therapeutic effects in people who are being treated for bladder cancer with immunotherapy. Concurrent use of cyclosporins and zyfaxin can cause an increased serum concentration of zyfaxin. As with other antibiotics, use of probiotics with zyfaxin can decrease its therapeutic effects. If you are planning on having a colonoscopy, consider using an alternative product for bowel cleansing other than sodium picosulfate. Adverse reactions to zyfaxin include in greater than 10% peripheral edema, fatigue and dizziness, ascites, nausea, and IBS. In 2 to 10%, some adverse reactions include headache, depression, paritis and skin rash, abdominal pain, pseudomembranous colitis, anemia, increased serum ALT, muscle spasm, nasopharyngitis and dyspnea, and fever. Some nursing measures include discuss specific use of drug and side effects with the patient as it relates to their treatment. Have the patient report immediately to the prescriber signs of swelling of arms or legs, abdominal edema, severe loss of strength and energy, shortness of breath, or signs of C. diff. Educate the patient about signs of a significant reaction which include wheezing, chest tightness, blue skin color, and seizures. I've included two links to commercials about Zyfaxin that you may find informative. I leave you with the Zyfaxin mascot. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the box below.